which was my dream job right there. You get to drink on the job, you go to parties, it was fantastic. So I was, I was learning about social media as I was doing this. I was on Facebook, I was on Twitter, I was tweeting about wine, and it was really, really fun. And then the company who sourced all the wines went out of business. So I decided right then that I was going to start my own business and kind of be more in, in control of what I, what I did. And while I was learning about social media, I noticed a hole in the market. There was a lot of blogs out there about social media, but there wasn't anything that I wanted to see. There wasn't anything that was more entertaining, more fun, more lighthearted. It was usually some sort of 20-year-old uh, uh, guy in a hoodie using a lot of acronyms and going too fast. So another thing that I do is I do improv comedy. And I've done that for a long time now. I just actually ventured into the world of stand-up comedy, which is a little scary in itself. But I decided that I was going to start a blog, but one of my characters was going to do the blogging for me. I was going to outsource that. And uh, so I decided that Grandma Mary, one of my characters, Grandma Mary, was going to do my blogging for me. She's going to do a video blog. And she's a little cranky. She gets a little irritated about the way social media changes all the time, about how we have to always keep up. So, but Grandma's Mar Grandma Mary's motto is if Grandma Mary can do it, then you can do it too. And, and that actually is also a little bit um, in the realm of bringing something a little more personal into your business. One of my things that I do was improv comedy. So I decided to bring that fun piece into my business and, and show that off a little bit. And so I always feel like that's also something you can do is show your personal style, show, have a little fun, have a little humor, and, and really bring your personality, your unique unit into your business. And, and what happened for me was kind of incredible. When I started my business, I never really dreamed it would go this way was I started blogging, and as people started connecting to me and sharing my stuff and telling my story, oh, you got to go check out Grandma Mary. She teaches you how to use Facebook. Uh, what happened was I was connected to someone who then recommended that I co-author Facebook Marketing All-in-One for Dummies. So I have a book right there. I co-authored three editions of Facebook Marketing All-in-One all for Dummies, along with Amy Florfield, Phyllis Care, and then the third edition with a couple other people. So I never imagined that my participation, my blog, would then lead to a book deal and then lead to a speaking career that has taken me all over the world. I was just in uh, New York, got back, on, um, got back on Monday. Before that, I was in Alaska. I was in Barbados. On Tuesday, I'm going to England and London to speak over there. So it's just amazing and it's incredible. So the, the power of social media is real and it can really take you a lot of different places. So let's talk about what we're going to discuss today. And I know <laughs> social media is a huge topic to fit into 30 minutes. So, <coughs> so we're really not going to be able to get too deep. I'm going to try and give you a few nuggets that you can take away and use right away in your business. But we're going to try and cover all this. So it might be a little fast paced. Just again, try and grab one of those nuggets that you go and implement right away. So we're going to cover all of that to read it all for you, but we're going we're gonna to get into it. So let's talk about your sales funnel and how social media fits into your sales fun funnel because, I mean, ultimately this is about making more money. This is about trying to get more customers, get uh, a little wider reach, get connected to more people, and get more people into your sales funnel. So here is an example of usually what people's sales funnel looks like and how people are originally come to you. They first are aware of your business. First of all, you're, you're generating awareness. Think of how you first heard about a business that you have uh, frequented. How, was it a, a share on social media? Was it a recommendation from a friend, a referral? Maybe it's in-person networking like this. You didn't know that the um, there was a Reiki master right, who lived right near you or something like that. So there's awareness. The second step is consideration. How does social media fit into each one of these? Sometimes it's a social media share. Sometimes it's just connecting to someone, on uh, reaching out and being a friend or a LinkedIn connection. Consideration is where they're really looking at what you offer. What, what, what do you offer that they can 
then use. A lot of times they might be looking at reviews and social proof. Social media can help a lot with that because if you have customers who are posting and commenting on your Facebook posts saying, oh, I love your service, or this is great, a great product, people are looking in that, at that and considering that, and saying, ah, oh, there's other happy customers. And there's a lot of studies that show um, reviews, online reviews, have a huge amount of power over any type of advertising and, and really close with referrals as well as far as a, a personal referral. So having those reviews are a good, a good thing. And then intent can vary. So intent, if you have an online business and an online shopping cart, then intent is like putting, you know, going to the checkout or something like that. But if you have a, a, a business where you're working more in person with someone, it could be just picking up the phone, coming into your location, something like that. And social media can sometimes help with that, being very visible and top of mind awareness reminds them that, oh yeah, I was gonna go uh, learn more about that and, and dive a little deeper into that product. And then the sale um, is at the bottom of, and it depends on how your sales process works. So there's a lot of pieces that go and fit into your marketing and social media is just one bubble here. The, you're not, it does not gonna replace any of the other things that is already working, it's going to enhance it. So don't, don't think that social media is going to be your be all, end all, I'm not preaching that at all. I think they all fit together. You have to have a good funnel for bringing people in and social media just enhances that process. So let's talk about how often you post and how to find good content because this is one of the biggest challenges that I think businesses have out there. People are like, well, what am I gonna post today? What am I gonna post today? And it's, it's so hard to think of something new and people are like, I don't have any ideas. I don't know, I don't wanna hear that. There's a lot of filtering that goes on. But if you have a system for finding content, you have go-to sources that are bringing content into you, this whole thing gets easier. And you can set up an editorial calendar so you know when you're posting what kind of content and, and then just make it a little more autom automated and schedule that content out so you don't have to think about it. That's your work. So here's what I suggest on content and uh, posting. Um, I find that a lot of businesses aren't doing enough posting, and actually I'm revealing one of my mistakes early, darn it. Um, we're gonna talk about social media mistakes. So um, this, you know, Facebook is really, I do suggest one time per day, and that can be during the week. These are all during the week. You don't, I'm not suggesting you have to work on the weekend, although, a lot of people are online on the weekends, so sometimes when you're posting on the weekend, you're a little more visible, you're coming up a little bit more. So um, just, again, think about that, and you can schedule some of these things. Facebook has a great scheduler for your page. Twitter is a little more intense, so I suggest that if people aren't into posting a lot, that you maybe not think about being on Twitter, because uh, it's a lot of work. LinkedIn, you have LinkedIn company pages and LinkedIn profiles where you can post updates. And those, again, are going into a news feed. People are reading that news feed and not a lot of people are posting there. So if you're posting there, you're more visible. So it's a good place to be. Pinterest, you wanna be doing new pins. Instagram, um, once a day is a good, good rule of thumb. You don't have to always post once a day. And Instagram and Facebook work really well together. So you can easily hook your Instagram account into your Facebook page or your profile, and then boom, you've got content on both. So content resources, and I know these are kind of information heavy, but I like to give people these resources because it's so hard to think of, um, think of where, where to get content. I'm gonna highlight just a few of these. Um, I want to hire, in the, uh, in the aggregators section, that means, an aggregator means that they're bringing in lots of content from all over the place. Um, you can look at SmartBrief. SmartBrief is one of my favorite places to find content because what they do is you say what kind of topic you want and they'll send you an email with like 10 posts that are good around that topic each day. So now you got content coming into your email box you just look at the articles and say, ah, that's a good one. I'll go post that one. That's great. 
Um, in the social sites, I'm gonna highlight Facebook interest lists because this one is one that a lot of people don't know about, but it's a great place to pull in content from different sources. And I'm gonna show you some examples. Blogs and web, um, there's Feedly, which is bringing in RSS feeds to, to you. It's like what Google, um, Google Reader used to be. There used to be a thing called Google Reader. It's now switched to Feedly is a good option for that. Uh, tools, I'm gonna sh share with you some tools here. Post Planner is a Facebook tool, and I'm gonna look, show you BuzzSumo as an example. So here's Facebook interest lists, and these are kind of hidden on Facebook. So if you're on your Facebook homepage, you go to the left, there's something that says interests on, that, on, the, on the left sidebar. Click on that, and now you're gonna be able to add some interests, and you can search for a topic. So search for a topic, and then when you find a good one, you're gonna just hit follow. And now it's pulling in Facebook pages that are posting about that topic. These are already created lists. And now you just go over to the interest list section every once in a while, click on that list within, within that interest area, and now you're gonna be able to share that to your page very easily. You're gonna just be able to pull in content, share it over your page, and find something to post. Um, and you can, again, like you can create your own interest list of, of pages you like. So maybe you follow some pages or you follow some people that are always posting some good things on, on Facebook. You're gonna be able to um, create your own if you, if you want to, or you can follow one that's already created. Andrew, can I ask you something? Yeah. Is that from your personal profile or from your fan page? So this is a, from your personal profile. So you're not you're um, finding these interest lists from your personal profile, but when you access them on your personal profile and you click share, you have the option to share it then to your Facebook page very easily. So now you're, you know, or you can share it to your personal profile if you're using your personal profile for business a little bit, which I usually recommend too, to because you're connected to a lot of people who who want to hear a little bit about your business. So, so you can you do it within your personal profile, but you can easily share it to your page. Talk worker alerts. Now, this is something that everyone in this room should have uh, on your business name. If you do nothing else, go and set a talk walker alert around your personal name or your business name. And what this does is it alerts you to anyone um, who is posting anything about you on the web or your business name. So if you have a, a focused business name, um, you know, if you're part of a larger company, sometimes that's a little too much because people are mentioning the, the larger company name in, in different areas. But it, is it also kind of a way to alert you to some industry news possibly? Yes? Um. If your company name is more than one name, do you put quotes around it? You can put it? quotes around it. Yeah. I think there's a, um, you can, yeah, so this, on this one you put quotes around it. I thought there was an exact match. But yeah, you put quotes around it to, to make sure that it's one string. Just one string. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay. And you can set it to, if you just want it to come in once a day or as, as they happen kind of thing. So it's a, it's a good idea. Okay, here is my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite tool for getting content. It's called buzzsumo.com. It is free to use. And uh, I use this, actually, I use this example in my, um, the event I was at where I was at the Air Carriers Conference. So I put in the, the keyword airplane. And what happens is it goes out and finds the most shared articles on the web around that topic. So now you can, and you can even sort by Facebook shares, by Twitter shares, and now you're already finding something that's popular that you can go share. So you, you know that this particular article is already engaging and interesting to people. You can go find that article and then share it over on social media. And, and so you're, you're, um, you can again filter it. You can, um, sometimes it doesn't always show like something that's uh, as relevant to you, but you can do different searches and it's populating the most shared articles. So it's different than a Google search because Google search is based on Google's algorithm around that topic. This is based around popular articles that are, have social media sharing already happening. 
So this is a good way to search because it's not going to bring up the same searches as Google does. So let's talk about the top three mistakes. Uh, top three mistakes that businesses make on social media. Number one is not posting enough. Here's why. Facebook filters, how, I forgot to do my little poll. How many of you have a Facebook page for your business? Okay. Did you know that all of your fans are not seeing all of your posts? Yeah, okay, so that's the problem, is that Facebook has this algorithm where it's not showing your post to all of your fans because it's basing their algorithm on what, um, what, people, what it thinks people want to see in their newsfeed. So it's skewing the results to show their friends a little bit more, friends that they interact with a little more, pages that they interact with a little bit more. So your fans are not always seeing every post. Even, you know, even if you're posting five times a day, it's basing their algorithm on what else might be available to that fan to show in their newsfeed. So your, your fans are not gonna get overwhelmed with too much content. And in fact, if you're only posting something like once a week and your fan misses it for a few weeks, you're gonna drop out of their newsfeed altogether. So you have to make sure that you are posting content that's interesting and engaging and also posting a little bit more frequently. And again, Twitter, the shelf life of a tweet is short. Um, and a lot of times it depends on who's online at that moment, you know? So, same with LinkedIn, you're, you're sometimes going down into, into invisibility because you're not posting enough. Another mistake that businesses make is only posting their own content. So only posting about your sales message, only posting about you, you, you. <laughs> and, and really what you want to think about when you're posting is what is in it for my customer? How am I going to be of service to them? How am I going to help them? and how am I going to possibly entertain them a little bit? People are on social media for a little entertainment, so using humor is, is definitely a good thing. Finding something fun to post is good, but always posting about yourself is gonna get a little boring. You know, we've all been to that um, nonstop, we've been in a conversation with that nonstop talker that never asked you about you, always about them. So make sure you're not that person on social media as, as well. Ask questions, engage people, and, and find out a little bit more about them. Now, mistake number three is huge, uh, not having a, a strategy for measurement. This is, if you, if you are using social media, you really need to understand how it's benefiting you. And a lot of people don't have a real clear feeling. They just feel like, well, oh, it doesn't seem to be working, you know? But it's because you're not measuring it right. A lot of times, um, well, let me just back up. If you use Google Alerts, how many of you are Google Analytics? How many of you are using Google Analytics on their site? Yeah, okay, awesome, good, some of you are. If you aren't, yeah, you are. Everyone who's, all the techie people are <laughs> definitely using it. But if you, uh, if you aren't using it, that's another thing that I would suggest getting started right away. Google Analytics is free to use, easy to install, or, if you don't know how to install it, talk to some of the people who uh, said that they can help. It's, it's extremely easy and free. And what happens is you can dive into the statistics and see how many, how many people are coming from Facebook, how many people are coming from Twitter, and you can really measure your efforts and say, yes, I definitely got benefit from my social media efforts because I can see 364 people came to my website just because of, you know, of whatever it is. I can't read it all here. But anyway, yeah, oh, I guess that's the one. Because, yeah, so this is a, you can see exactly what the referring sites are. And the other cool thing that you can see with Google Analytics is the keywords. So you can find out what people are searching on to find you. So now you know what's working for you and how your search engine optimization is working for you. And you can maybe, if you've got a blog, you can maybe say, ah, I want to rank a little bit more for this type of keywords. I'm going to blog more and use that keyword in my titles, use it in my, in my metadata, use it in my um, you know, anchor words and things like that. So you can look at these keywords. So here's, here's my keywords, Facebook tutorials, Facebook fan page RSS, Facebook tutorial. I definitely uh, like to see that those types of people are coming into my site. 
So here's five, yes. Is, that, is this just for rating your website or is it also rate your Google or your Facebook page? So no, uh, Google Analytics doesn't work on your Facebook page. Um, what you have to use for Facebook, your Facebook page is the insights area. So if you've seen that insights area, you'll get a little more information about like how far your posts are going, what your most popular posts are on Facebook uh, directly. And that's a good thing to dive into as well. Facebook uh, insights aren't gonna give you the keyword stuff that you could you get with Google Analytics, because it doesn't just doesn't give you that. But it, at least you can find out which posts are working the best for you and when people are connecting to you. So here's five quick ways to grow on every site. Number one is to use your warm market. A lot of times people um, don't, they get worried about sharing things on their personal profile. I definitely suggest melding your personal profiles and, and your business a little bit because who refers business to us a lot of times? It's our friends, our family. I know my Aunt Teresa in Nashville is never gonna be my customer, but she'll tell everyone about me who she hears who might need social media help up and down, up and down the Tennessee. <laughs> so I know that um, it's helpful to occasionally say what's going on in my business, on my personal sites. Um, ask people, connect with people, um, start, start growing and making sure people know what you do. I have a great story of a, a woman who is an interior designer and she had a friend she was talking to at school pickup after, after school picking up their kids and her friend was saying, oh, I just am doing this huge uh, interior design project on my house. Um, it's just killing me. We're gutting our whole house. And, and the woman was like, did you know I'm an interior designer? She's like, what? I had no idea. You know, they talk together all the time. And, and she was spending $75,000 on redoing her house. And she didn't know one of her good friends. She's like, if I had known that's what you did, I would have gone with you. So again, letting people know what you do is a good thing. Cross-promoting your social sites. Uh, if you're on so if you're on Twitter, tell people about how to find you on Facebook. If you're on LinkedIn, make sure people understand how to connect with you on other sites. Put this information in your bio, in your about section. Say, find me here, 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 and here. A lot of people don't have enough information in their about section on LinkedIn and their Facebook page. So go and redo that information and link cross promote to everywhere you are because the more people get to see your post, the more top of mind awareness you're gonna have. Use hashtags appropriately. Um, this is, if you, if, if you uh, have seen hashtags or use hashtags on social sites, uh, Twitter and Instagram are some of the bigger ones to use hashtags, you're gonna get a little bit higher reach that way for people who are talking about that topic. Um, does everyone know what a hashtag is? No. Okay, so <laughs> I know this is, I always make assumptions about, I, about what people know and they don't know and I just don't want it to do that. So hashtag is just this little, this little number sign with a word in front of it. it. It's all one word and what this does is this filters the conversation. So it's a clickable link, it turns into a clickable link, and it's gonna filter the conversation around that topic, around that word. And now you're gonna be able to break out the conversation and see everyone else who has that hashtag in their post. So for example, on Twitter, um, this was a post by Gary V, and he uh, put the hashtag shareable. I clicked on that, and it popped up this box, and now I can see everyone else who has the word shareable in their, in their post somewhere. So now I'm able to filter that conversation on Twitter, same on Instagram, also works on Facebook and Google Plus. So having that allows people to have a, a kind of a, a mini chat room basically. It's a, it's a separate side conversation with all the people talking about that, that topic. This can't be focused. So you see um, on focused. commercials, a lot of times people are putting on putting the hashtag on there. And what that means is it now is you'll, be able to, you'll be able really? to talk to all the people talking about that particular thing. Um, it, it can be very branded as well. So using hashtags is a good thing because you're going to get a little more exposure with the people who are talking just about that subject. Follow targeted people. This is a great way for grow, to grow. 
Um, make sure that you go out and connect. A lot of your growth is gonna come from just going out and following other people, connecting other people. But you also have to take it a step further and participate with those people. Have conversations, post on, if you follow a fan page, you can actually comment on another fan page as your fan page and get expo more exposure for your own fan page. So that's a great way to, again, get that added visibility. Posting great content. This is huge as well. Um, if you don't have good content, why should someone follow you? So this is an example of um, a conference I was at. This is uh, Pinterest boards. And this is actually a B2B company. They're a shipping company. And you know, I find all different kinds of companies on, on Pinterest, or on, uh, on all different social, social sites, even B2B, B2C. And what I like about this is they, they have fun boards, container art, <coughs> container living, as well as you know just different different parts that yep different parts that they're um, different things that they're talking about with their business. So it's definitely a good thing to uh, find good content and post good content. They have over a thousand followers for their shipping company on Pinterest, which is I think amazing. Having good images is helpful. You can see these images are very eye-catching on Facebook. They've got red, they've got big text on them. And I wanna give you some tools for creating good images. Visual tools that are gonna work for you, my favorite is Canva, canva.com. And they are a free tool. You can use it to create awesome visuals, uh, visual images that you can help, help uh, catch people's eye. And you can use different text, it's awesome. So those are some of my visual tools that I love. Step uh, number five for growth is going to be advertising. So advertising is a way to reach targeted people. You can you, uh, really gain highly targeted followers. So I'm gonna. I know we're running short on time, and I I, I have so much content. I get so excited about social media. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, getting people into your sales cycle real quick. You can, I just want to mention that on Facebook, you can target the fans of another page. You can target by interests. So now you're reaching your specific people who are interested in just what you do. And, and you're not wasting your money with uh, your ad going all over. Yeah. When, when I choose a target in Facebook boosting, mm -hmm. sometimes it says I can't calculate the audience. Is yeah. that a bad thing? Should I avoid that? Or should uh, I say, oh, it's too big to measure? So Facebook boosting is, um, and I'll just like break uh, this real quick because I know, and I, we may have to skip some of the other things that I'm going to talk about. That's okay because I put too much in. Um, but boosting is not always the best way to go. It's better to go into the ads manager and, and use your targets this way because boosting a post is going to optimize that post for just likes and comments on that post rather than like website clicks or something like that if you're trying to direct people to a website. So it's better to optimize that post to, to get more <laughs> website clicks. But it's not a bad thing that they can't calculate it. Sometimes it could be because you're doing a few different things that are going to limit that audience too strictly. Um, so, it, it, or it could be that Facebook is having a glitch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, let's talk about really fast, this is, I'm going to just lightning round this, how to convert your social media and media following into leads and sales. You really want to transfer your social media connections into your email list. So, focus on driving everyone over to your free offer or your newsletter or whatever you have because what you're going to do from there is you're going to build your relationship and sell through email. Plus, social media can go away. If you're growing your following, all of a sudden Facebook goes away, some hacker gets in, deletes your page, all that work is gone. So make sure you get those people over to your email list uh, as soon as you can with a free offer. And what that means is you have to have some sort of lead generation magnet. Maybe it's a free webinar, maybe it's something for free, maybe it's a free month of your service or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, I hate to interrupt, I actually found a really awesome um, app that I use on all, both my iPhones as well as my, my tablet. Yeah. Um, it's called Every Post. It lets me post as much as I want just about every single day. Um, and it posts on all of those media websites as well as more. And you can also post in your email too. So if you do a lot of emails, sending out general emails to just businesses, they get those emails every hour on the hour of how often you want to post them. So you can post like 11, 12, 15 times a day. Yeah. And you don't even have to be doing it. You just set it up the night before. Okay. Cool. I haven't heard of that tool. Cool. So every, every post. Yeah. It's available in, uh, on iTunes in the App Store. It's okay. free. Okay. So the, and there's other types of uh, tools that let you post all 
to multiple locations. Some Hootsuite is one that I use. Doesn't go to email though, so that's interesting. Yeah. Hootsuite, I think you post just once at yeah. a time, but this Here, one is here's say is another. So. Okay. So I'm going to leave it at this, and I'm going to just show you, you know, some ideas for giveaways and what I usually send people to a free site to give me a to sign up for a free webinar, something like that. Um, and when you have a good uh, offer, people will share that offer. So, you know, having something good that's free can help you get people over to your email list. So, and then make sure you're following up. The fortune is in the follow up in your email list. You're connecting people to what you have. You're you're letting people know about your service and your products, and you're making that connection a little bit deeper. So, final thoughts: Don't do it all. Just take one site, rock that site. Be consistent with your efforts, and then use social media to grow your list. Have a little fun with it. So thank you so much. I'm just gonna give you a free offer that I have that's a special offer available. Um, it's brand new. Um, it's at andreaball.com forward slash 50 posts. It's 50 posts guaranteed to engage your, your audience. You can sign up right now on your, on your iPhone or your phone, whatever. Um, just go to andreaball.com forward slash 50 posts and get that free report. Um, I also do a lot of products as well. And uh, come connect with me afterwards and ask some questions. So thanks everybody.